those of you that's, that's been here for a while, you've heard me preach a lot of this uh, before. It'll be different because I don't really uh, preach with notes, and so uh, it'll come out a little bit different. But this is a message I call Past, Present, and Future. And I'll explain that to you just a little bit. Well, let me put it this way. Okay, God wants to invade your present to bring you to your future. But if you're still in bondage and guilty about your past, it hinders people from going on. So basically what we have to do, we have to realize God has forgiven us for our, of our past, so God will invade your present, so don't let the change, the bondages, the guilt, the shame, the disgrace of the past keep you from God's future. You see, the, what we need to remember, God doesn't even remember our sins anymore. So why are we? The devil will try to remind you. Other people will try to remind you. Religion will try to remind you. But you have to understand, what well, God has made your present to bring you to your future. Don't let your past keep you from going on. That's basically the gospel of Jesus Christ in a nutshell. And that's really a lot, uh, a lot of what I'm going to say today that uh, is... It's just explaining who God is and what He wants to do within your life. Amen. So let's get into this in, in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 10. For thus saith the Lord, after 70 years accomplished in Babylon, I will visit you. This is a prophetic word. So the Holy Spirit of God is speaking. For thus saith the Lord, after 70 years accomplished in Babylon, I will visit you, and I will perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. The word return, I mean to restore, it means to recover. It means to be refreshed, to be recalled, to be rescued, to bring back. Now we'll look right here at this minute. Now here, the, to get a bird's eye view, here's what's happening. These are people that God saved out of Egypt. They were in bondage. They were in slavery for 400 years. God brings them out. God brings Moses to deliver. He uses the deliverer to bring them out. They cross the, uh, cross the desert. They get to the promised land. They're in the promised land, they contaminate it, defile it, they get into idolatry. God sends the prophets and they kill the prophets, they persecute the prophets, they rejected the word of the Lord. So God said, okay, says, I brought you out of Egypt, which is a type of the world, and I brought you to the promised land. Now you're in the promised land, I got you out of Egypt, but Egypt, the world's still in your heart. Yes. So the sense says, you love the world, and, and the world's in your heart, I'm going to let you taste of it for 70 years. So now they're back in captivity. Now they're back in bondage. God sent Jeremiah the prophet to them. They mocked him. They put him in a pit. They uh, they uh, ridiculed him. They didn't believe what he had to say. So God, had, the love of God, the mercy of God, sent a prophet to them, telling him exactly, uh, don't do this. Uh, and if you do this, bad things are going to happen. If you do this, you'll be forgiven. You'll come out of it. And they mocked the, They mocked the messenger that God sent to them. So that since the world was in their heart, 70 years of captivity, 70 years of bondage, 70 years back of slavery, Babylon again is the type of the world. Okay, so if they were in Egypt for 400 years, you would have think that they would have learned a lesson. Yes. So after, after 40 years of captivity, slavery, wow. that's basically what Egypt, Egypt speaks of bondage, yes. and uh, it's called the house, a house of bondage. So they were in slavery, so now 70 years. Now here's the prophetic word. The prophetic word is that their 70 years are accomplished. And uh, there's going to be a season of chastisement. Yes. Now, I, w I want to make this real clear. It's one thing to be lied about. It's another thing to be falsely accused. These people came out of Egypt. God brought them across them. And 40 years of water, you will it. He got them to the promised land. And while they're in the promised land, they, they followed it. They got into idolatry. They became worldly. The world was in their heart. They did. God sent a prophet. They killed their prophets. So they were not lied about. They're not false like you. They're guilty as sin itself. Oh, yes. Okay, they're not false like you. They're not lied about. They're guilty. Yeah. So yes. 70 years of chastisement. If you ever find yourself yes, kicked out of the kingdom of God yeah. for a while, the promise, have you ever been find yourself kicked out of the promised land for a while? Yes. So he says, I'm going to accomplish yes. something. I since you, since, you, uh, since the Bible says, in your presence, in my presence is full of joy, and you don't enjoy my presence. I'll let you hang around what you really enjoy. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Since you enjoy death and sickness and bondage and addiction so much, I'll let you taste of it until you're sick of it. Yes. God will let you have something you think you want, you think you need, until you're miserable and you're sick of it. Yes, I'm preaching about it somebody. Amen. Amen. So he says that the key word there, after 70 years are accomplished, he, uh, he, he will chastise us 
And when he chastises it, he has a goal in mind to restore you. Amen. I'm going to, since, you're, since you become slow of learning, I'm going to help you. I'm going to teach you. Yes. Since you won't listen to my voice, since you won't listen to conviction, you won't read my word, you won't come to the house of God, you won't do the things of God, I'll speak to you in the way you understand. I'm going to speak to you yes. through circumstances. That's right. Yes. Yes. And that got their attention. Yes. Okay, so I to, you're going to be there a while. Yes. Why do some people leave the church? They, uh, they're gone a while. Because their season is not up. You could not have prayed these people out of there, out of, out of Babylon in six years, or 16 years, or 60 years. And tell, seven years are coming. I will do something in you. Amen. Amen. Some people, you can't pray back into the house of God. You can't pray back into the kingdom of God because their season is not yet accomplished because God's going to do something. They may think they need that letter. They may think they need to suck on that evil weed. So God, let them have it what they think that they need. So long until they're miserable. Amen. So good. I love yeah. Until what they think they need blows up in their face. Yeah. <laughs> Sucking on a weed. Yeah. Um, Why are you in there? Well, sucking on this weed. <laughs> I will visit the seven years I accomplish. Um, there are people, you can be close enough to God that if you get separated from the presence of God for seven hours, you're fasting and praying. Yeah. What's wrong? What did I? Where did I? Where did I miss it? Yeah. I will visit you after seven years accomplished in Babylon, Babylon, the top of the world. I will visit you, and I will perform my good work towards you, and causing you to return, and causing you to return. He's gonna bring it back. So you got to see the love of God. You got to see the mercy of God. I'm gonna bring you back. The word, the word return, I'm going to say this again, be to re, I'm going to restore you, I will recover you, I will rescue you, I'll bring you back, I will refresh you, and I will recall you. Yes. Now see, who wants to waste 70 years of their life? Jesus. No, no way. <laughs> no, no, nothing. Now they got back to where they were, at their season of chastisement, at their season of discipline, in um, Hebrew chapter 12, around verse 11, uh, the New American Standard said, All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but grievous. Yet to them that have been trained, yet to them that have been trained by it, have you been trained by the Holy Spirit yet? Oh, have yeah. you had the rug put up from under you yet? Oh, yes. Yet to them that have been trained by it, afterwards that yields the peaceful fruit and righteousness. See, there are prophetic words about the peace of God, about the joy of God. Yes. Too many people are miserable yes. because when we start becoming religious and getting in the dead works and trusting in what we're doing rather than what God has done, when, yeah. we, when we begin to stray a little bit with our heart, we begin to dry up and we become miserable. Yeah. Verse 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, Amen. thoughts Amen. of peace Amen. and none of evil. Amen. To give you an expected end. Amen. What does God want to do? So, so basically, no. what I'm telling you, these people were guilty, they blew it. They yes, sinned. They yeah. greatly sinned. Yes, they're, they're not lying about They're not false. They're sinned. Yeah. They're guilty. Yeah. Seven years of chastisement. So then when God said, when I begin to bring you back, I have to communicate. I know the thoughts I think toward you. Because yeah. sometimes we don't. Lord. Sometimes yeah. they didn't. Because you can, you can make such a mess. God can bring you out of Egypt and you still make a mess. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. God said, I'm a, oh, yes. You think you think you ruined it. You think I'm not big. If I can bring you out of Egypt once, yes, yes Lord. Can I bring you out of Egypt and Babylon twice? Yes, He does. Or three times? Oh yes. Or four times? Come on, say something, God. Amen. It's Lord, so. I, I'm, I'm not the fastest learner. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I need the yeah, I didn't go back to Egypt without telling you one thing. I've choked enough parakeets. So you have to understand that God, God going to communicate to you. If God going to bring you, here's the, here's the, it's so important what we want you to understand. You don't just become a Christian and sit down at church miserable and dry and barren and bored to the day. You keep the focus. That's, that's religion. That's not real Christianity. There's something. You're so alive. Yes. Jesus you become yes. partakers of His divine nature. Amen. You're so fulfilled. Amen. You're so Amen. satisfied. Yes, Father. In Jesus. So He says, "I know the thoughts that I think toward you." Said the Lord, "Thoughts of peace." Because uh, anybody beside me, and they're going way, way back there. And I thought, man, you you may think I'm exaggerating. 
<laughs> there was a time I thought I was so full of self and so stubborn, I would peek around the corner because I wanted to make sure no car was going to run me over. I thought I'm going to, I thought, man, I'm sure a lightning bolt going to get me. I'm going to get hit by a car. I'm sure that I, I pushed the grace of God too far. Wow. Come on, I've been there. Yeah. Well, I'm not talking down to you. No. Well, I'm telling you how yeah. stubborn and how self-willed and self-idolatry. Oh, and I had so such an independent spirit. I didn't wrestle. Once I got saved, I didn't wrestle with alcohol, drugs, and immorality. I wrestled with myself. Yeah. I saw the enemy and I saw him in the mirror. It was a me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> I know the thoughts I think towards you said, though, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give me the expected end. <coughs> That's so now here, if you if you have been less than perfect, and who has it? Oh, yes. yes. If you feel like, man, I just messed up. I pushed the mercy of God too far. Now, I'm going to give you the expected end. Here's, here's what God's saying to people that were guilty as sin itself. Yes. Say, I'm going to give you the expected end. That means I'm going to give you hope. Yes. Amen. If you're here today, you have made a mess. God said, I'm going to give you hope. Amen. Amen. I want you to look forward with assurance. Yes. I want to, you to be mindful in a certain direction with an expected attitude. Yes. I want you to know that things may be bad, but they're going to get better. Yes. Come on, yes. to God. Yes. No matter where you are, there's an increase yes. in joy yes. and peace. Yes. And health and anointing and everything in the Amen. things of God. Lord. Come on, somebody needs yes. to give God the praise. Hallelujah. So, friends, see here. I'm going to say a lot about this as we go along in then. Whenever, because there's going to be about three, two or three messages on, on this topic right here. One of the greatest things that God has to deal with, Pastor Jens, would you get that for uh, what, uh, what God says about us? Yes. One of, the, one of the things, one of the greatest things that God's going to have to deal with when we come out of Egypt or we come out of a backslid condition is that God wants to, God wants to give us an identity. Yes. We have to understand there's an identity that our life has meaning. We have purpose, okay? Yes. So that basically what God's going to, I'll share this a little bit. God's going to rebuild an identity that you know that God loves you, yes. that there's a spirit of expectation. Yes. So God said, listen, I want you to know that they're going to, I'm going to bring you back to the place. You have, you're going to have hope again. They're going, yes. Things are going to get from where you are to better. No matter where you are right now, right. things will get better. Yes. Enlargement. Increase, break yes. more. Yes. Yes. See, that's what God wants to do. No matter yes. where you are, you don't just say, Well, I want to be a Christian, sit that boy to the day you keep the bucket down. <laughs> no. So then basically he had you had this experience that then God said, After seven years are accomplished, verse twelve, then you shall call upon me. In other words, you're gonna begin to pray again. And you shall go and you shall pray to me, and I God I God will hearken to you. Amen. Don't go right here just now. Because uh, I feel like the Spirit of God wanted me, wanted me to say this. Is that when, when John the Baptist came upon the scene and then, then Jesus appeared, they said, here, both of them said this. Well, let me, tell you, let me tell you what John the Baptist didn't say. See, when, whenever he said, repent, he didn't say there's another teacher, another preacher, another denomination, another organization, another movie. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Jesus Amen. come upon the scene and repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. We're not here, another preacher, another teacher, yes. just another church service. The kingdom of God is here. Amen. Now how will we deal with that? Amen. The kingdom of God is here. Yes. So, see, very important. Who do you yes. say that I am? Yes. Well, well, well. Who do men say that? Well, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah. Yeah, but who do you? Yeah, who do you and I by our life say that he is? Oh, wow. Come on, say to God. Amen. Who do we say? If I'm, if I'm bored, miserable, and angry, and selfish, and proud, and mean as a junkyard dog, yeah. who going to want what I have? Wow. <laughs> Rather than a hungry alligator. That's true, yes. Okay, then you see, what he says, that, that's what we need to understand, is that there's something when, when, when you when you come to God, when you come to church, the kingdom of God is at hand. Yes. Okay, he said, then you shall call upon me, you shall go and you shall pray to me, and I, I God will hear you, I yes. hearken to you, yes. I will Amen. listen Amen. to you. Amen. Amen. Who's he talking about? Yeah. We're not talking I, about people who've been I, lied about, yes. falsely kid. We're talking about people guilty yes. of sin. Yes. Yes. Come on, guilty. Yes. Who here beside me has fallen short of the glory of God? Yes, yes, yes. Come on, saints of God. Yes, yes, yes. Then, come on, then 
You have prayed to me and I will hearken to you. Yes. Now, let me just, how many of you would just want more God? Yes. I'm going to say that. Yes. The next verse, I am. You shall seek me. Yes. You shall find me. When? We search for God. So you don't want to come to church and tolerate a church service and not seek God in prayer, not seek God in singing, not seek God in praying, not seek God in worship, not hearken when we get to the Holy Spirit and listen. We got to seek Him in the message. What is God saying to me? Yes. The kingdom of God is in hand. It's not another preacher. It's not just another church service. The kingdom of God is in hand. Who will I say that He is by my life when I leave here? We can fall back in the dead works as the barefoot prophetess was preaching this morning. We trust in our church service. Well, I haven't robbed the bank. I haven't murdered the bank. I'll put some money in the offering. God's well pleased with me. But I'm being the junkyard dog. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. God's not broke into that need my money. That's right. I need to give. Yes. yes. That's right. Yes. yes. That's it's better to give than to receive. Yes. You shall. How many want to find? How many want to, to find more God? Yes. Let me just give you an illustration. Yes. There's been multiple times in my life. Well, let me let me give this. This is one of the most powerful illustrations. Um. In the in the summer, summer of 1980. And we're going through the long story, but. I had, I had the sight in my call to God. If I'm called to God, how am I going to answer that? And, and how do I get from point A to point B? And so I saw God. I had this long list of different Bible colleges to go to. And, and then I ended up uh, narrowed down the Christ for Nation to go to Christ for Nation. Now, I understand. I had been saved a few years. There have been no... There have been no cigarettes. There have been no evil weed. There have been no liquor. There have been no hardcore drugs. There have been no immorality. I go to Christ for Nations... And God leads me to, it's a long story how I got into, into it, that you had to sign in for one a, a certain type of ministry. And I, God told me to sign in for prayer, and I rebuilt and signed up for something else. But I, God tricked me, and I punched the wrong thing, and I ended up in prayer. <laughs> and, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. When, I went to this, when I went to this prayer class, this woman was so deep in God. I'm sitting there. She opens up her mouth and I'm hearing God like I've never heard God before. Wow. So they had this prayer meeting. They called the World Prayer Meeting. They met at 6 o'clock every morning. I think it was 7 o'clock. met at 7 o'clock every morning. We stood in the circle. There was about anywhere from 7 to 12 of us. We stood in the circle. And I'm standing there. I understand I've been saved a few years. Never fallen out of church. Never rebelled. Never got an alcohol, drugs, the party and scene. Totally out of it. But when I went to this prayer meeting, I couldn't stand in the circle. I had to go over and confess sin. I'm not robbing banks. I'm not murdering anyone. I just had to confess. I had to go deep. I had to really search my heart. There were things that I was full of self, full of selfishness, full of pride, insecurity, rejection, all kind of fears. All kind of things were tormenting me. And day after day, week after week, I, all I could do was go over this corner, just confess. And then after weeks went by, I could come back in the circle and I could, I could stand there and every, maybe once every five days I'd peep out a little whip sissy prayer that I had to go back, confess, repent. Amen. What was I doing? I was beginning to climb. I was beginning to ascend. I would begin to search my heart. I was beginning to empty out of self. And I would begin to get Amen. the word in me. Amen. I was going through a transition. Yes. I was being renewed in the spirit of my mind. I was emptying out of self, emptying out of the world. The insecurity of that. We're not talking about it's not, it's not immorality, it's not drugs, it's not alcohol now. It's self. It's a self life. Yes. It's selfishness. It's jealousy. It's insecurities. It's fear. It's tormentors. It's pride. It's pride. It's, it's anger. Things that, things that were deep down there. Finally, I begin. I begin. I begin to feel God. Yeah. I, I want I want to feel God like they felt God. And all of a sudden, as as the weeks, days turn into weeks, I begin to I gotta feel something. I feel something for the fifth thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now I begin now I begin to feel. Yes. See the begin just blind faith. I never felt anything. Yes. 
when I, the God said I could get there. Yeah. Yeah. The president, God said I could get there. But I wasn't there. But God said I could get there. But he came to by hearing, hearing, hearing and by hearing. No well, I didn't feel God, but God said I could feel God. Yes. I could get his presence. So yes. I had to confess, I had to repent, I had to shoot my heart. I had to grow yes. until yes. I had to get to the place and begin to, Amen. once I began to feel a little bit, yes. I began to feel a little bit of the presence of God in the atmosphere. Now I'm encouraged. Yeah. All I got was a little, yeah. but I'm going to take the faith that I got. Yeah. Come on. It was blind faith that gets yeah. to yeah. Now I begin to feel something. Yeah. It became easier to pray. Yeah. I'm going to get alive. Yeah. I'm going to get anointed. Yeah. And time goes by. Yeah. I begin to part of the prayer group of Senator. Yeah. And next thing you know, it's either the year they ask me to be the leader of the prayer group. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, give God a praise. Yeah. Yeah. I, just didn't, I didn't do anything. Yeah. Yes, I, 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 so the understand I worked two jobs. I worked two jobs to save the money to go to school. And so <coughs> one of the things was I was battle weary. My body was worn out. So I and I really I really hadn't been taught about really developing a prayer life, a secret, a secret place. I really hadn't been taught that until I got to school. So okay, let me go in there. You shall see me, you shall find me when you search me with all of your heart. Now, this is what I... Look right here, Smith. Whenever we come to the house of God, now let's just say we feel dry, we feel barren, we feel empty, we don't really feel alive. As the prophetic word says, you know, there's too many people lacking like Jordan. I want you to have the joy. <coughs> so pray, you know. What we want to do, if you don't have the joy, admit you don't have the joy. Yes. And then begin to pursue. Yes. Amen. Okay, so he, here's, yes. in a nutshell, everything I'm trying to say and what every church service was saying for. Amen. That if we come to the house of God and we feel dry, we feel barren, we feel empty, we don't feel alive, we don't feel anointed, we don't have the joy of the Lord, we don't feel that peace or war going on inside of me. Yes. What I'm saying is, if you want God, the Bible said, draw nigh to me. Yes. And God said, then I will draw nigh to you. So we can wait. I'm waiting on God. How come I don't? He's waiting on us. And He has more time than I do. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> you shall seek me. And he shall so we you. hear a message. So we, we want more God. Oh, if I could just feel God like so, so many of the other people. If I could just have that energy, that anointing. If I could have that kind of power. We can. Yes. Thank you. But you don't want to come in here. Draw not to me, and I'll draw not to you. And do nothing. Yes. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. The problem then is that God, the problem of the devil, yes. that I become the problem. Yes. I, yes. Come, I have become comfortable hearing. Help me, Jesus. That's everything that God trying to say here. The whole point in Jeremiah chapter yes. 29. These people are guilty of sin. Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Somebody wasn't looking me in the eye. <laughs> you shall seek me and you shall find me. I, I can't read that alone. Everything that I'm trying to say today, so I'm going to take my time with this because I'm going to put this in two, three, or four messages. Brothers try to do too much at one time. This is. What I'm going to say right now, I, I say this so often, it is so revelatory that many times you would miss it. We'll come to the house of God, and God give us a word. And in that word, there's an assignment. We may say, amen, you hear, when the word comes forth, you may scream, amen, you may see it, you may, you may have revelation, you understand, it computes to you. Then we comfortably forget about it, go out and don't do what God told us to do. So basically, here's here's everything. Here's the gospel. That when God gives us the word, there'll be an assignment. God, in His wisdom, will just back up and watch who comes into alignment with the assignment and who doesn't. Yes. If we come, become comfortable hearing and not doing, then we fall back to the big religious and trusting in ourselves. There's a place if. Uh, would you see? Would would we go to our jobs? Well, we go to our jobs, and the supervisor says, "I want you to do one, three, and five. 
Are we going to tell the supervisor, I'm not going to do one, three, and five? No. But we feel careful to send that to God. And then we'll tell other people the things of God more important than the natural. We say that with the mouth, but with our life, we say, we say just the opposite. And then we can't figure out why they say church people are hypocrites. Some are. Well, those different degrees. I've been a hypocrite, so I want to be. Well, not, not to the highest degree, but I. Okay, I, I just feel like I feel like God wants me to. I want to just enlarge upon this right here. I'm on camp right here just for a little bit, because this this is so important that if we're going to come out of and go into, in between is the wilderness, and so that whenever God gives a word, God will give a word and then the word to be the assignment. Then He waits for a response. I call it relating and responding. So when we can learn how to relate to God. So God gives us a word. And in that word, there'll be an assignment. Yes. If you and I say yes, if we see it, if we say yes, I mean, we mean business with God. Yes. When, when, and hell knows when we, we, when we mean business, and God knows when we mean business. Yeah. Sometimes we'll say the right thing, and we use self-deception. We lie to ourselves. I've lied to myself. Yes. I'm serious. This is, this is, we can mean well, but somehow we just get distracted, we get busy, when we get out of and it's, this is not for condemnation. This is just a, a, a kind of a, we need just a little tune-up. Sometimes my car needs a tune-up. Yes. Sometimes we need a little tune-up. Okay? <laughs> and so I will put this in there. Now, the point I want to make is that when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, they were led by the cloud by day and the fire by night. There's a whole bunch of things that happened in there. Uh, there was heavenly man and there was water from a rock. The, the bitter water was, was made sweet. There was a whole lot that happened. That is what when you say yes to God, yes, I want to come out of and into. So that you understand the promised land, the promised land basically means this. The promises of God that God has for you, now you're walking in them. There's fulfillment of them. There is love. There is joy. There is peace. There's an anointing. Now there, there's finances. Now it's not that there isn't more for you. But see, you're now experiencing. It's not. It's not just doctrine and not theory. Everything is not futuristic. It's now. Now faith is. So now you begin. The, so when when God gives us a word, we just come out of Egypt. We just get saved. Then when we say yes to God, then it's what we call the process. The process begins, yes. and the process will be hundreds, if not a few thousand choices and decisions that we make on the journey. You make thousands of decisions on your journey when you become a Christian, as we're coming out of Egypt, represent, crossing the Red Sea is when you become a Christian. You cross it, uh, you cross the Red Sea, and I think right behind Dawn, there's a yellow book somewhere uh, on the book of Exodus that explains it extremely powerfully well. It's by Arthur Pink. Yes. Now let me, just, let me just put this right here, because I just feel like before we go any further, that we would, God would have us just understand this. Okay, so when God gives a word, let me uh, let me illustrate this. Uh, how can I do this? I need to finish before I go to another thing. Let me finish Jeremiah chapter twenty-nine. Uh, you shall seek me, verse thirteen. You shall seek me. You shall find me when you search for me with love and heart, and I will be found of you, said the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. Anything you're in bondage with. Amen. I will turn away your captivity. Yes, amen. Maybe that's you missing a good time to shout. Yeah. Anything oh, yeah. you're in bondage to, anything that you fear, yeah. can, can bring to amen. Fear, amen. Anything that you fear. Okay, so it says, I will turn away your captivity. Now here's what this means. Anything that makes you feel like an exile. Yes. Come on, yes. I, I feel exile from the from the kingdom of yeah. God. I feel exile from the presence Outside. of God. I feel like an exile from the joy of the Lord, yeah. from the anointing. I feel like an exile. I feel like I'm in exile. Wow. I feel like a prisoner. The next meeting, I feel like a prisoner. It. it means your former state, it says, uh, uh, carried away. So anything that you got carried away because it says, I'm going to return, I'm going to take away your captivity. Amen. How many want that? Yes. Yes. How many Amen. believe that? Yes. Yes. <coughs> I will gather you from all nations, from all the places where I've driven you, say the Lord. Now, you don't want to miss this, okay? This is the bottom line of everything that I want to try to say through, throughout this little mini-series. I, I, I will gather you from the place that I've driven you, say the Lord, and I will bring you again to the place that I called you to be carried away from. 
Yes. You know what that is? That is yes. resurrection. Amen. That's yeah. restoration. Yeah. That's what you've got to see. You, I don't care how miserable. And, and look what God did to the gathering demonic. Look how God treated Mary Magdalene. Yes. See, what we want to do, this, this is so important that this is not playing game. This is not just a, that's why John the Baptist said, this is not an, another life. preacher, not another teacher, not another pastor, not another organization, yes. denomination. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Yes. That's the mentality yes. that we have. To, we're saying the kingdom of God is at hand. Yes. Right here, right now. For every person, he'll turn away from your captivity. He'll bring you right back to the place where you were. What we're talking about is wholeness, wholeness, healing, deliverance, restoration. Okay, so I'm going to illustrate now a lot of what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Uh, turn to Exodus chapter 3. I want you to just meditate upon that. I want you to soak, receive this, and, and meditate upon this. And uh, I'm, I'm going to really take my time with this. I'll, I don't know when I'll preach this again, but I'm going to be doing this series, a mini series on this. I call this, my title is Past, Present, and Future. And I'll say more about that in just a little bit. Okay, in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 9. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me. I want you to stop and think about all the people that are lost, they're, they're in captivity, they're addicted, they're on the verge of a nervous breakdown, they're contemplating suicide, they're in bondage, they're in a horrible circumstance situation, they can't see any way out, and they're crying, they're sighing, they're crying by reason of the bondage, and God is hearing their cry, He's hearing their pain. So that this is the picture that God then, the, the, all the people with all the pain, all the hurt, all the wounds, all the rejection, yes. all the abandonment, Beautiful. all the lack of provision, with the, with the, all the pain that they suffered, yes. all everything that they've been through. God said, I hear their cry. Yes. So is he going to try to get a hold of Moses to be delivered? And try to get today, Moses is a type of the profane church. Amen. He's a type of the church. God tried, and God got a hold of Moses to be the answer to the people that were born in his day, that God tried to get a hold of the body of Christ today, that we would become part of the answer. Yes. Okay, so here's what God's doing. This is why, see, you're going you're gonna to see a little mini picture here, is that in identity, when you come to Christ, God wants, he wants to restore your identity. Yes. Amen. You, Amen. you have to see you like God sees you. Yes. Amen. Yes. A son, a daughter. You got to see yourself as a son of God, a child of God, that you have been made in the image of God. Amen. See, Amen. this is what God's trying to do. He tried to heal you oh, of your yes. negative self image, yes. of your low self esteem. Yes. You're a part of the body of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. Amen. See, the Amen. devil trying to torment you in your mind. We got to speak. I got the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. By the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The devil trying to make you feel guilty of I mean, shame. See, again, God is invading your present. Those of you here today, God's invading your present Amen. to bring you to your future. Don't let your past keep you from your future. We've already given that time to the devil and the faith and the world. We're coming out of there. You are joined in your faith. Yes, you have to understand God is trying to get yes. your inheritance to yes. you. Yes. See, when we say no to God, we say, don't give me my inheritance. Oh. And then we get mad because we're in poverty. Yes. It makes no sense. Yes. People come to church and ignore God who is loved. And they go home and be angry, depressed because nobody loves me. They just came to church and rejected God who is loved. Yes. And they go home and I don't feel loved. It makes no sense. It's deception. Oh, it's not trying to awaken to identity. Yes. That may take, for me, it took years. <laughs> it, there's people here that it only took you a few weeks. When you begin to see that you're more than a conqueror, that yes. you're a new creature. Yes, Lord. For real. He that's, he that's in Christ, 
is a new creature. Old, old things pass away. One or two things. Do you think? Something. Keep an me. Old things. What do we do? Feel the guilty and bored. We got the kingdom of God is in here. We got a spectator spirit. Yeah. We have been seducing. We like, oh, it's just a movie. We watch this ball game. It's like watching a movie. Some kind of, we're watching like theater. No, the kingdom of God is in here. God is here. Who do I say that I am? By my response to God, who's speaking to me now? Two times to give me my inheritance. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, Lord. He says, I'm the righteousness of God of Christ. See, some of us, for the first time when I was in church and the pastor I got saved there, he said, he said, you are the righteousness of God of Christ. I sat in the pew and I said, not me, if you only knew. You only do the filthy things I did. I didn't understand the power of the blood. Amen. I didn't understand the power of blood. Neither do one of two of you. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are fearfully wonderful to me. You are the workmanship of God. God doesn't make any change. And that was my to you. And that was accusing you to you. Yes, Lord God. Yes. You're an ambassador for Jesus yes, Christ. Yes. You're co co workers with Jesus. Yes. The chosen generation. Yes. You're a royal, a royal Christian. Yes. You're a holy nation. Yes. You're a protector. Yes. 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 You shall be holy, by the holy saints of the Lord. Come on, keep going, pray. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. Verse 9. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I have seen the oppression, which means their affliction, their distress, there are things happening to them to crush them. Yeah. See, those people come here, and that, that describes you. Mm -hmm. But we put a phony smile upon our face and pretend I'm not hurting. Oh, I'm hurting. Mm -hmm. I'm hurting. I have seen the affliction wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Now listen to the word, and you're going in this word you're going to hear an assignment. Then watch Moses' response. See, every time that God speaks to us, He's waiting for my response. Okay, so when we feel comfortable coming to the house of God, reading the Word, uh, now, none of you have been this wicked. But I've read the Bible to impress myself before. That's true, yeah. I've read the Bible to impress God before. What foolishness. Yes, yes. But the truth I make you free. In other words, God's trying to awaken me. Maybe one or two out of you out of dead works. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because the Spirit of God addresses a lack of joy. Yes. And He wants you to have that joy. He wants you Amen. to have that smile upon your face. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. What, Even yes, what God. godly mommy or daddy? Yes. What godly mommy or daddy in the right mind wouldn't want their children to be happy? Amen. Come on, you see what I'm saying? Yes. yes. You know, we, we may not get to this today, but all this we're going to cover in detail. We're going to cover in detail. There may be a, uh, there may be one whole service given that whenever you see to the believer, God becomes your father. Yes. There is no yes. believer. Well, every person on earth has a, a spiritual father. It's yes. either God or the devil. Yes. He said, he said in John chapter eight, your father is the devil and liar. What does a liar say? 
Lies. <laughs> That's true. Lies. What does God do with truth say? Truth. So then, see, people people forsake God as truth, yeah. and then they they get involved with people who's a liar, and then they get hurt because you lied to me. Yes. God told you they were going to lie to you. <laughs> They, they all just have wire upon the forehead. <laughs> Liar! Yes. Who is their... See, that's why, that's why you be careful who you hang with because yeah. I want to know who your spiritual father is. Amen. Because if you're a spiritual father, the devil, you're a liar. Yes. Amen. Come on. Yes. Come on, say to God. Yes. So you're going to protect yourself from deception. Yes. You can protect yourself from getting hurt. Amen. So you won't go so deep in alcohol and drugs and, and never have that's all kinds of things that happen to you. Hey, you hurt me. Yes. Well... You hurt God by walking away from Him and putting yourself in this situation. Yes. It's a choice. There wasn't as many It's a choice. That's what we're trying to say a whole lot about choice. Yes. That's true. We're going to illustrate this for you, okay? What this is going to do over the next few services, God's going to put the, to use uh, basketball language, God's going to put the ball in your court. And what are we going to do with it? See, that's rather, my goal is not to preach in such a way that anybody walk out and say, well, he can preach. I'm trying to get you to God. Amen. Amen. And, I, and to respond to the God, I'm not trying to get you to walk out the door talking about me. I want you to talk about how big God is. Amen. And what Amen. he wants to do with yes. God. How good he is. Yes. Oh, how could I, how could I ever doubt him? Yes. How could I ever waste too much time? Yes. After 400 years of captivity, yes. how could I waste... 70 years! Oh, You'll come to a place I'm not going to waste another minute. Yes. Yes. Not true. another day. Yes. You'll find the, the wiser you become, yes. the more spiritual you become, the less time you waste. Thank you, Lord. you realize time is more valuable than money. First hand. Now let's see if you hear a word with an assignment. Come now therefore and I will send you to Pharaoh. <laughs> Hear a directive word? Yes. yes. Now you have to understand, Moses is a fugitive. Yes. Yes. He's one of, not for Jack and your job, he's one of for murder. <laughs> yeah. Murder. So God says, I want you to go to Egypt. Come now, therefore, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh that you may bring forth my, my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Egypt, a type of the world. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh, a type of Satan. Awesome. He's wanted. There's a there's a there's a warrant out to kill him for his arrest. He's a fugitive. Okay, so God gives him a word. Now God knows, God knows this Pharaoh is deceased. So God gives him a word, and in the word there's an assignment. Now watch Moses' response. Verse eleven. And Moses said to God, "Who am I?" Yes. So he wanted two of us. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Who am I? Do you know why? Because Moses is thinking about who he killed. Yeah. Moses feels like a failure. Moses feel Moses feels I genuinely had a call of God upon my life. And I killed the Egyptian, tried to do I'm trying to deliver the people of my own energy, my own strength, I'm a failure. Moses spent forty years in Egypt, forty years in the back side of the desert, and at the beginning of the chapter <coughs> God gives him this burning bush experience. And so now the assignment comes, and God is telling him, I want you to go, you are the deliverer, Moses. Now, therefore, go to, go to Pharaoh and bring my people out of Egypt. And Moses says, who am I? Now, very important, again, God says, I want to invade your present to bring you to your future. But if you allow your past... To re you're still chained to your past, still in bondage to, to guilt and shame and disgrace and condemnation that is going to hinder you from going on. So I want to address that right now. Turn to Philippians. Yes, Turn to the book of Philippians. And Moses goes on back there and he has, he has multiple objections. Tell me. Would you turn that area on the trial, please? Moses went on ahead, and he had several objections, and God is patient it, uh, over and over again, and he's patient with Moses, and then God really did become strong with Moses, though 
So then God gets Moses able to answer the call. Moses felt guilty. He felt like a failure. Again, oh, yes. 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in the backside of the desert. Moses had three 40-year periods. So now he's about to enter in to the last 40-year period of his life, or we would say the last third of his life is going to be given the ministry. Ministry that he had given up on, he thought he was a failure. And see, you may be here today, and you may think you may have had great, vision, great visions of grandeur, uh, that God had this tremendous plan for your life, and, and you, you've given up on it. You, you feel complacent, apathy. Uh, you just feel kind of dead, like, I've missed it. I took this wrong turn. I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. If, I, if only I hadn't done. So when you hear the fire, and you see certain people flowing a certain way, what goes on in some people that come here is like, if I only hadn't, I shouldn't have. I missed it. I, I could have had that, but now I can't. Now, we're going to see in, in Philippians chapter 3, yeah. verse 13. Right. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind. Yes, Lord. Forgetting those things that are behind. You've got to forget the mistakes, the hurt, the pain. You've got to let it go. God will heal that. Yeah. Okay, again, I will say that over and over again, God will invade your present to bring you to your future. Yes. Don't let your past. God said, forgetting. Yes. Forgetting your past. All Scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth. Yes. You see the zeal there? Yes. Forgetting the past. Well, if we don't forget the past and all we ponder and mm -hmm. think about and meditate upon, upon the hurts and the pain and the suffering, then we're not reaching forth. Yes. We lose that zeal. We lose that fire. We lose yes. that hunger. Yes. Okay, so forgetting the past and reaching forth yes. and pursuing, growing. Yes. That's the hunger. Yes. First thing, the yes. fire, the zeal. Yes. I'm seeking. Yes. I'm going to find. Yes. I'm going to turn to God. I'm going to find Him. I will draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to me. I will let the past go. We can't change the past. So don't give. We've already given the devil too much time in the past. Don't give him your future. Amen. Amen. So what is God doing right here? He invades Moses' present to give him a future. What if he would not have gone back? Yeah. Yeah. Now let me finish this in Philippians. <coughs> Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to those things that are before. That's now, awesome. look right here just a minute. See that, that there are certain things, just like since the Spirit of God addressed peace and the Spirit of God addressed joy today, mm -hmm. are we really pursuing the peace of God and the joy of the Lord? I got that on my prayer list. I pray almost every day. God, anoint me with the oil of gladness. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. And so when Amen. you're so strong with God, when temptation comes, it's not really a temptation. You recognize it, but you're so alive to God, you're not attracted to death anymore. Yes. Yes. You're so enjoying freedom, yes. you're not attracted by bondage anymore. Yes. I press toward the pride. The mark of the prize of the high calling of God. Yes. So uh, <coughs> that's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to press toward, okay? Yes, Amen. Now let me, because I feel like right from the very beginning, we need to, uh, let me get this one part in. And, uh, Thank you, Jesus. Press on. I begin to write down some things. Okay, so over and over again, this, this, this is why God is putting the ball in our court, every one of us. That every time we come together, every time that you really see God in your private devotions, every time you get alone with God and you pray and you read the Word and you're devouring these very powerful revelatory books, whenever you're truly seeking God, you want God to speak to you, guide you, direct you, deliver you, heal you, restore you, revive you, refresh you, whenever you want God to move within your life, God will speak to you. Yeah. Now, how we respond, that's very important. I call it relating and responding. How will I respond to what God said? He's not impressed if I say amen and shout, jump over pews, but if I don't do it when I leave the, 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 the sanctuary, he's not impressed. Okay, so I just wrote down some things that, that we need to just meditate upon this. What if we came to the house of God and someone preached for a whole week a series on seeking first the kingdom of God? Wow. Oh, oh yeah. God, that's good. That's good. But we don't seek. There's yeah. no change within yeah. my life. Yeah. I feel dry, I feel dead, I feel bad, I feel unfruitful, I feel bored with the face of God. And so God says, 
if, if you seek me, you find me. Yes. yes. And I think it's I think it's Amy said, I love this scripture. She said, Seek ye me, and you shall live. Yeah. That means you'll be lively, you'll be alive, you'll be quickened by the spirit. Amen. Who wants Amen. to be dead and bored no. the whole rest of their lives? Yes. Seek ye me, and you shall live. Yes. So seek ye first yeah. the kingdom, kingdom of God. If we leave here, and then with everything else in priority, if there's any time or energy left over, then we see God. Wrong priorities. So God will change everything within yes. your life. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Jesus. Yes. yes, Lord. For righteousness. That's happy. How hungry. Just one time just passionate. <laughs> we used to, Pastor Jan and I used to get around more than what we get around now. And we, we when we and we were involved in different ministries, different places. I said the big conventions we would go, and all the way to the convention, we would be. Right. I was we we're praying, talking to that tongue, we're praying. And, yeah. and one time we'll go to this convention, and we're almost there. I looked at Pastor and I go, oh "My God, we're not, we're not even praying. We weren't even convicted. We used to pray all the way from home to where we were going." Yeah. We didn't even pray. <coughs> we began to fiddle around tongues and we got we did get to the convention. <coughs> when I was walking up the front steps of that church, mm -hmm. I was walking up the front steps of the church and the spirit of prophecy came upon me. Wow. The spirit of the Lord came upon me. I gave it a prophetic word yeah. and revival was going to break out in that church. And about two years later it broke out. They, yeah. believed, Amen. they believed the prophecy. Amen. They believed the prophecy Amen. that God gave me. And every time I went yeah. there to visit, they would they would always be going. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. And it did happen. Amen. It did Amen. Amen. Okay, so put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. What if we murmured right away yeah. like a complaint? Uh -oh. Love not the world. <laughs> yeah, we like that. Forgive or you are not. Forgive. Yeah. Bless those that curse you. Yes. 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 Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to say about three things here in a row. We're to bless. Don't throw the maids at me. First thing, husbands, love your wives. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Wives, submit to and respect your husbands. Amen. Yes. Amen. Children, Amen. obey your parents. Yes. yes. Amen. Now, this is years. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Flee fornication. Amen. Yes. That's a good one. Thank Follow me and you become fishers of men. Amen. Yes. Pray without ceasing. Yes. Meditate upon my word day and night. That's awesome. Draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Love your enemies. Overcome evil with good. Study and destroy yourself and prove. These are all scriptures. Yes. Obey every ordinance of man. Yes, I may sir. find himself driving down the highway way <laughs> over that. Okay. Yes. The just shall live by faith. Faith or that works is dead. For man to know what they do, they doeth and not that him it is sin. Forsake not the assembling of the saints together. Whoever looks upon one with the lust after has committed adultery yes, in his heart. Lord. Come out from among them, be a separate people, saith the Lord. Yes. You cannot drink the cup of one the cup of devils. See, what happens is, whenever we feel comfortable coming and hearing the Word, see, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Still is. Yes. When, see, if you go going down to verse 14, that's John chapter 1, the Word became flesh. Okay, so love, truth then becomes a reality within us. Yes. We become living love. We become living truth. We become living peace. So that God begins to live through us, and there's a whole bunch more there. The whole point I'm trying to make is that if we want real Christianity, what we don't want to do, this is Hebrews chapter 3, I think verse 7. Today or any day, if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart as they did the day that provoked God to anger, departing, from a living God because of the deceitfulness of sin. Okay, so what we don't want to do is come and hear what we could do, what we could have, and then say yes, amen, but then not come into alignment where we live here. That doesn't fool God. That's how wise He is. So He will watch how I respond. And let me, I want to make this real clear to you. Yes. This is an area. Since I became, uh, became a Christian, alcohol, drugs, immorality uh, wasn't my problem. But stubbornness, yes. independent spirit, self-will, idolatry, self-idolatry was a major problem for me. 
it wasn't the outward sense, it was the inward man. The independent spirit, that stubbornness, and what really brought me out of it, those books by Watchman Nee, mm -hmm. that really, that no one really addresses that better than Watchman Nee, that's the two books, yeah. the top of the yes. closest to the door right there, mm -hmm. that I highly recommend. So we always good. try to have those upon uh, hand that will really help you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now, so here's basically what God's going to do. He's going to give you a word, and in the word there'll be an assignment. And when, whenever we wait, they the, the have a promise. Come, come now, therefore, Moses, and I'll send you to Pharaoh, and you shall bring my children, the children of Israel, out of Egypt, and you shall serve God upon this mountain. Yay. Now, wow. here's, this is, I'll say this in a better way as we go along. But what happens is, God will give you a word. Okay, and when whenever you accept, see, he'll, he'll start at the end. Okay, he'll show you what you could have. In other words, uh, when those of you that heard the story, the plumber's wife was praying for me for about two and a half years before I got <laughs> saved, there was this gnawing in me, and I had been around some people uh, that did some witnessing, and, and uh, they, they just they weren't people that went to church anyway. As soon as God began drawing me, inside of me there was something telling me I was called. It, it was, I don't know how to say it other than I knew it in my knower. There was something in me. I knew it in my knower. And when I, when I gave my life to Christ, I knew that I was called to preach. Now, whenever I accepted that, so I said yes to that. But I come all the way back to here because I had to deal with me because my life was such a mess. Yes. So for years, I'm just trying to get right with God. Yes, I'm trying to put, yes, the, so this important. is a great big huge puzzle. The, the pieces are all scattered. And I had to find part of the, part of the, they were, the pieces were in front of me. I had to find them. That's the scattered work. Uh, my life was a mess. So I had to deal with me. I had to get my life together because I was very far from ministry. But whenever you say to that, when you say, okay, now remember, Remember uh, Friday night message about Paul the Apostle? Uh -huh. that, that he's called to be an apostle, and I'll show him what great things he must suffer. Yeah. Okay, so he, he's called to be an apostle, so whenever you see the end, yes. whenever you say yes to that, yes. say, I'm still here, but I've got to get to there. Yes. From yes. here to there is the process. Yes. Hundreds or a few thousand yes. decisions yes. and choices we have to be there. Sometimes you get sidetracked. Yeah. True. Yeah. Sometimes you make a mistake, but yes. you don't get eliminated. Amen. Come on, if you're if you're a ball player, if you're a baseball player, you strike out. And you don't. You're not forbidden to play uh, baseball anymore. If you're a basketball player and you turn the ball over, you don't get eliminated from playing basketball anymore. If you make a mistake of Christianity, you're not eliminated. Amen. It's the patience of God, the love of God. Yes. How do we get from here to there by faith? Yes. Yes. Now that's what that's basically what a lot of what Pastor Newman was sharing this morning. See, we got to have to yes. fight with it. We got yes. to be willing to contend. Hell itself, no. when when hell realizes that God has this plan, the purpose for your life, hell then tries to pre put in what we call a preemptive strike before you even say yet. Yeah, when hell itself realizes yeah. Yeah. God yeah. Is, yeah. God is a is calling, God's going to call you, hell will try to stop you yes. before you even say yes. That's and true. then after you say yes, yeah. it increases the activity, the warfare begins, the oh, fight's yeah. on. Yes. Yes. You and yes. I begin with power yes. along upon the enemy, yes. so we don't have any excuse for throwing in the towel and quitting. Yes. Everybody has been hurt. The question yes. has been hurt. The question is, have I dealt with it? So if one day we're going to preach, forgive, or you're not forgiven, I have to practice that yes, Lord. before I can preach it. Yes. You will be given now an opportunity to hate. <laughs> oh, yes. Quite quiet right there. Yeah, yeah. You'll be given an opportunity to tune back, turn back. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Seriously. Oh, yes. Precious saints of God. Um, I want to, let me, Joseph, Joseph was given a word. He has this prophetic dream. 
the prophetic dream that God gave him, where he saw the sun and the moon bound that, and and, uh, and he shares this dream. This dream, this deposit of God, kept him through everything that he went through, all the rejection, all the persecution. What had he said? He said, "Yes, I want that." So that everything he went through never stopped. He never threw that down. It, it was 12 to 14 years yes. Yes. before fulfillment of the dream. Mm. <coughs> That's the process. Okay? Yes. And what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, uh, learn to enjoy the process. Yes. And it's the process. Amen. It's the process that makes you rich. Yes. It's the process that makes you spiritually rich. Yes. Enjoy the journey and oh. learning how to love and how to yes. pray and how to continue and fight the fight of faith yes. and come alive in the midst of death and be resurrected oh. in life yes. in the of yes. the dead. Amen. It's the process that yes. makes you spiritually rich. I wouldn't yes. trade for nothing. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Remember a little shepherd boy, David? Yes. Remember when Saul fell? Yes. yes. Saul fell? Yeah. God told Samuel the prophet, Will not me a new king? Yes. Samuel the prophet goes to the house of Jesse, lines up a bunch of the sons, he lines up everybody, lines up everybody except David. Yeah. Yeah. His own daddy yeah. didn't believe that David could be the one. Your own mom, Paul, your own brother and sister may not believe That's that God right. could use you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But God has, God knows you. Amen. God knows your heart. So little David gets to David and says, is there any more sons? And he brings David and God said, this is the one. And Samuel the prophet pours out the anointing upon little David that his own daddy, his own parents never really thought of it. Well, I can't use little David. Surely the, the next king of Israel is not David. Come on, that's what people say may be saying about you. That's right. And but God anointed him. Amen. God knows the heart of people. And so then basically, you know so it was fourteen to sixteen years. Think of everything. Think of everything that you are David, you are anointed to be the next king. So when David said, Yes, I come into alignment yes. with the assignment all that he oh. went through. They yes. could have killed Saul. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And reap what he sowed. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Everything he went through. See, I'm illustrating. You have to be able to see. See, the, the word king there. Don't think that, don't put that in just like President of the United States or King of Israel. See, we have been called to be kings and priests. Yeah. In other words, you're called to have dominion. Yes. You have dominion over death, yes. over thoughts, yes. over sin, yes. over sickness, yes. over demons. Yes. Oh, you're, you're missing a good time amen. to say amen. <laughs> That's your dominion. Oh, yes. Come on, say to God. Yes. Dominion over sin, dominion over death, That's dominion right. over demons, dominion yes, over sickness. Amen. Are you kidding me? A dominion over poverty? Yes. Come on, saints of God. Yes. Dominion over depression? Amen. Yes. So that's, a, that's that's your kingship. You yes. have been anointed to rule. You've been anointed to be the real. king of the tail. Yes. So that basically when you come to what Pastor Newman was saying again this morning, Matthew chapter 13, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100, 100 fold. How about a God inheritance for you? Do you want it? God is putting the ball in our court. It's what we do with yes. what God gives us. Faith comes by hearing. Yes. Some religious phony was like, you don't need to come to church to be a Christian. You don't need to read that Bible. Yes. That's all. That's legalism. Faith cometh. I hear the word. Not once having heard 20 years ago. Amen. Yeah. But by hearing. Hearing. I want you to think. Just ponder just a little bit because I'm going to elaborate upon this. Think of everything that David went through. 14 to 68 years. David was anointed three different times. Number one, he was he was anointed uh, by God through Samuel the prophet. Number two, he was anointed by the southern kingdom. Number three, anointed by the northern kingdom. Three different anointing process. 
process further enlargement increase. All that he went through, Saul's persecution, pursuing him. And what I'm saying is that there's a time where God was really making a holy man of God. Amen. There's something about wilderness wanderings. Yes, Lord. There's something about being wanted, being pursued, hiding. That's so why when he says, God's my high tower, God's my, God's my rock, God's yes. my shield. He, he knew that it was time. I had, uh, God's my high tower, so I get it real high. I see, where is Saul? Where's his army? Where are they coming from? So I could, and God's my shield. He, he, he hides me. He's my, yes. he's my salvation. Yes. 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 Think about, see, this is, this is where we live. Did God give Abraham a promise? Yes. Now, did it happen in the next five days? No. Next five weeks? No. Next five months? No. Next five years? No. Next ten years? No. What has God said to you? Amen. Yeah. Now you begin to see process. Yes. You begin to see process. So we're ready. Okay? And, and in other words, sometimes you've just got to enjoy the process. Amen. You've got to enjoy you got to enjoy this learning. You got uh, the, here's the way I put it. We got to enjoy the journey. Yeah, yeah. So that prophetic word was. See, if you're a second grader, if you're a second grader uh, in in elementary school, you ought not to be miserable that you're not a sophomore in high school. Yeah. Enjoy every every grade. Yes, yes. Enjoy if you, enjoy the second yeah, grade. Every day. Enjoy the third grade. Yeah. Enjoy the fourth grade. Yes. So if you're a sophomore in high school, don't be mad because you're not a junior in college. See, enjoy every day. Yes. There's where there's where your peace will come from. There's where the anointing of gladness. That's where the joy of the Lord. See, when we really begin to practice these things, it's not head knowledge. It's like, well, I heard I've heard that before, but I don't have it. I've heard it, but I don't have it. So God wants us to have it. Yes. Yes. Twenty-five years. Yeah. Yes. 25. 25 years of process. Yes. I've been saying 40 good. years is still growing. Amen. Come on, saints of God. Amen. There's a process it's here. You, the blood is so it's big that you've spread. never outgrown the thing of oh. God. Yes. yes. Jesus, 30 years of preparation for three years of ministry. Yeah. Yeah. 30 years of preparation for three years of ministry. Think about Noah. How long did Noah work upon the ark? How people? How many people got that? See, well, how many thousands of people got saved in Noah's ministry? Only his family. Only his family wanted what he had. Come on, say that takes faith. But did he know Noah? To the saving of his household, he believed the word that God had given them, though it never rained before. So when he, when the people come, there, what are you building? Uh, no, I'm, I'm building an ark. Why are you building an ark? Because it's going to rain. What's rain? <laughs> there's going to be so much rain, there's going to be a flood. They don't know what a flood is. See, what is it What is it that God's saying to you that other people don't understand? See, you've got to know God for yourself. This is... This is a daily walk. See, don't let people deceive you. Don't let people lie to you. Come on, don't become a slave to religion. Don't be to a denomination or organization or movement or any preacher. This is not about taking money from people. This is about getting people to God. Yes. Come on, people, God people don't yes. exist to take as much money from them or sell them things. That's a bunch of nonsense. It's crazy. Yes. It's wrong. It's an abomination in the sight yes. of God. Yes. A hundred years. So that basically, what has God been saying to you and I? And what will we, will we say yes to God? Uh, hang on, because we're going somewhere. Let me try to find a way to bring this in for a landing. We'll make it clear that once once we see yes to the call, the process begins. You never want to lose sight of the vision. Without a vision, the people perish. The word vision means prophetic revelation. You have to be able to see in the spirit realm. 
So when you're called to be a certain thing, whether it be apostle, whether it be a prophet, whether it be a pastor, whether it be evangelist, whether it be a teacher, whether it be a song leader, whether it be a Bible college teacher, instructor, whatever God calls you to, an intercessor, you have to be able to see that. Whatever and that has to be so clear to you that you're willing to go through the process and you never lose sight of the vision. Hell wants to create such a storm within your life that you lose sight of the vision, you forget the call, and you become complacent and lose the fire, lose the zeal, yes. and actually lose ground, lose territory, rather than that's why we've got to really have to, to, to really uh, fight the fight of faith. Let me, yes. let me say that. Turn to, uh, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Now what we're going to see, we're going to see the New Testament. <clears throat> the Old Testament type is, when God brought the children of, Israel, children of Israel out of Egypt, they were led by the cloud by day and the fire by night. That's a type of the Holy Spirit. Cloud by day, and during the day it was very hot, so the cloud kept them from the heat, protected them from the heat, and the fire by night kept them warm. They're, and in other words, this is important, they were never without light. Day, fire by night. So they were never in darkness. Okay, they're always in light, and the Holy Spirit led them. When the when the whole, when the cloud did not move, they never moved. Okay, so that's why you, you always want to know if you make a decision. You always want is, is God going with? Is God leading me? What happens is was that I was so self-willed, so such an independent spirit, so uh, self idolatry I would make choices, and I would make choices. I would get out of the will of God, and they get mad at God. Because he wasn't blessing my plan. And what I had to do, that's what I learned from Watchman D in those two books up there, the top all the way closer to the door, uh, The Spiritual Man and the Release of His Spirit. Very powerful book, especially The Self-Will, The Release of the Spirit. It deals with The Self-Will, The Independent Spirit, uh, of Real Stubbornness, Real Strong, Real Strong within me, and Strong on one of my parents' side of the family. Just a real strong world of stubbornness. And that was, that was, that got me in much, much problem. And, and when I began to read that, that began to tell me, number one, what was wrong with me. Number two, how God was dealing with me. Number three, how to get out of that. And number four, how to, how to, to enter into what God has for me. So it was, it was explaining all of this to me. So then, uh, I was so, uh, how can I say, so self-willed and out of the spirit that I'm running my, I'm Lord of my own life. Jesus is my Savior, but I'm running my life. And when God wouldn't bless my plans, I would get angry at God, and then I would have the nerve to say, "The devil's attacking me." No. But the devil wasn't attacking me. I was out of the will of God. Yes. And God, don't miss this. God loved me enough to not let me have my way. Amen. That's what Babylon's all about. Mm -hmm. He will block doors that you've been getting to go through that's not his will yes. to get you back in his will Amen. that you can have his blessing and have his favor and have the manifest it's presence so of awesome. God. I'm getting out there in the desert. Mm. Yeah. Now let me let me let me illustrate that for you. Yeah, right Remember when David was called David, you you know King David, you know dancing David, you know giant killing David, you know bear killing and lion killing David, <laughs> you know adultery David. One, one amen there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Remember when he's called, when he's called, and and Saul's pursuing him, that he's out there in that desert, and God's with him. Yes. And it was right. part of his preparation. That's right. But that's after he, after when it was time for kings to go to war, when David stayed home, yeah. and he goes up on the rooftop, uh -huh. and he sees Bathsheba in the nude taking the bath. Yeah. yeah. He saw her. He sent for her, and he sent with her. Pow, pow, pow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then, through a whole bunch of circumstances, then he ends back out in that same wilderness. Yeah. They're the same one. Yeah. Without the favor of God. Yeah. Because now sin, now Absalom is trying to take his throne. Absalom is trying to overthrow him. Come on. Yeah. Come on, saints of God. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm saying is, the whole thing about David there was David confesses, 
David repents, he cries out to God, and Absalom was in rebellion. Sometimes God will raise up an enemy. Yes. Right. Yes, he does. If I won't deal with my stuff, well, let me put it this way. When Israel yes. didn't deal with those stuff, they, well, uh -huh. when, when Israel was in the will of God, they defeated Jericho with the drop of a hat. Mm -hmm. But then they come to itty be little Ai. Mm -hmm. yes. And they get what? Have you ever had great victories in your life and come at times I can't defeat a demon the size of a gnat? Yes. What is wrong? God, what's wrong? Well, the problem isn't that God has the power to defeat it. The problem is God's trying to get my attention now. Yes. Because the whole God. thing, obedience right. is the key to breakthrough, enlargement, yes. increase. Obedience is the key to having God's divine favor. Yes. yes. God's divine provision, protection. Yes. So when things begin to go wrong, yeah. and what happens, yeah. God wants to bring yeah. every one of us to a place of maturity. Yes. All he needs to do to get our attention is withdraw his presence. Yes. There doesn't need to be any lightning bolts. There doesn't need to be any earthquakes. There doesn't need to be any famine. There doesn't need to be any droughts. All he need, we should be sensitive enough to God. All he does is withdraw his presence yes, with what happened. Yes, yes. What did yes. I miss it? Amen. Amen. Yes. Did yes. I choke the parakeet? What, yes. what, what did I say? What did I, what did I miss? Yes. Yes. What did I miss it? Yes. He just withdraws his presence yes, and what, what happened? Oh my God. If you've ever been in his presence and then you're out of his presence, you are miserable. You are miserable. That's all God wants to just get you to that place, okay? Okay, so the Old Testament type, live by the cloud by day and the fire by night, and on this journey, ask God to lead you and guide you. Okay, so we're going to come in for landing here just a little bit. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, did I call that? Okay, chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. Do you realize how many people are so miserable, they're so angry, they're so frustrated, they're so unfulfilled, dissatisfied, they're so frustrated because they don't feel loved? Yes. And the whole time God is loved. Yes. And they'll tolerate a church service. Yes. They never so really sad. seek God who is love. They'll tolerate a church service. They'll critique everything and everyone, but never really come to the way of getting in His presence and feeling the love of God is love. Yes. So then, basically, then that's what God wants to do. He He wants to reveal who He is to us. Yes. Okay. So what we don't want to do is settle for churchianity, religion, tolerating a church service. There are people. There are people that commit suicide because they don't feel loved. Yes. 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 And let me, let me say. I can say that in the back. <coughs> and I'm not trying to talk down. There are people that come to church and yes. commit suicide because they don't feel loved. Yeah. Yes. And God is love. Yeah. Yes. So our goal is to have such yeah. power from the spirit of love that God, who is love, is so powerful in here. Yes that we will understand there's another side of God. There's a side that uh, if God gives me a word like he did Jonah, arise and go to Nineveh. But instead of going to Nineveh, I go somewhere else. God spoke to Jonah in a variety of circumstances. So anywhere along there, Jonah could set the jig up. I just pass every pan. Yes, I go to Nineveh. Yeah. So how much stuff will you and I put ourselves through before we surrender to what God's saying to you and to I? So here's what it comes down to. Mary, the mother of Jesus, said whatever he tells you to do, do it. Okay, if he's dealing with you about prayer, about forgiving, about reading the Word, of uh, of church attendance, of being come out from among them, be a separate people. What, whatever we say to you, you need to join. Seek me. Learn how to pray. Learn how to praise. Learn how to worship. Learn how to come alive. Whatever he's telling you to do, do it. Okay, so this word communion here, the, the, the love of God and the communion with the Holy Spirit. Communion, oneness. Here, here's the, kind of the way of, I put that. It's like... Um, 
What do they, what do they call these, these tubs where all these jet things are shooting in there? So you're like in this whirlpool, and, and this is like this water shooting in there, and it's boiling, it's bubbling up, and so here your body's being refreshed, and your body's being massaged. It's like, the, the communion with the Holy Spirit is like soaking. It's like you're spiritually in His presence. You feel the love of God. It's like you were never... I, I'm old enough and I was raised far enough out of the country. There were no showers. We took baths. And when I was a little boy, Mama would make bubble bath. I'd play ball toppies. I'd my muscles in my body be so sore and my mama my mama and I make me a bubble bath that I would soak in that thing. I'm telling you, you can soak in the love of God. You can soak in the presence of God. I'm saying the spirit of God to me. this word that I'll try. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost. Yay. Now what, <clears throat> what I want to, I've got to explain this part. That when on the journey out of and into out of Egypt which represents the world speaks of bondage to the promised land which speaks of a place where the promises of God are now being fulfilled. Yeah. You're now walking in them. In between is this wilderness. That's where God deals with the inward man. Okay, what happens here is that this is where and when we learn the partnership yes. with the Holy Spirit. We yes. begin to partner with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We begin to depend. See, here in this wilderness is where God breaks that independent spirit. Yes. No oh, one, God. underline, no one gets to the promised land. You, you, the whole, most of them died in the wilderness. Yeah. 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 Most of them not perished. Yes. Most of them perished in the world. Talk about lemon, milk, and honey, and never yeah. saw it. Never. That can happen to me. Yeah. That can happen to one or two of you. Yeah. Okay, so that basically, no. the, you, when we begin the partnership yeah. with the Holy Spirit of God, with what I call fellowship, this is what I yes. pray almost every day of my life. Woo. Fellowship, partnership, communion, oneness. The communion of the Holy Spirit that the whole, I yes. give per, the Holy Spirit permission to block every door I begin to go through that's not His will and to lead me and guide me. When the clouds are to move, I don't move. Yes, Lord. Communion, partnership, fellowship, relationship yes. with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Relationship yes. with the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. How long? How long, how many years have we been in church and still have little or no relationship with the Holy Spirit? Little or no communion, oneness. See, what God wants to do is break that independent spirit and make it dependent upon Him. Because His thoughts are higher than our thoughts and His ways are higher than our ways. He wants you to win. He wants you to get in. He doesn't want you to be left out. He doesn't want you to feel unloved and unwanted and unneeded and not unprotected. Oh, yes, Lord. Break it in. Communion of the Holy Spirit means partnership, fellowship, participation. When you realize, you get to the place of realizing that it, when you get serious, you become awake in the spirit. Yes. You begin to realize how active the devil is against you and how active God is for you and how much comes down to the choices, the decisions that we make. That's why the, the process is so important. There'll be thousands of decisions on that journey. Learn how to enjoy the journey and do not think because you make a mistake that you're eliminated. 
that is not legalistic. He wants he wants to participate. <coughs> This is, this is so real. You ever, you ever come to a place in your life and or a certain circumstance, situation, and, and your thought is, and I need some help? Yes. Yeah. yes. The Holy Spirit's called the helper. Yes. Yes. There's been times when I've taken back ownership Yep. Yep. Oh, yes. Yep. Come on, look at him. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. Yes. In other words, I get back in control. Yes, I do. <clears throat> After much dealings, God was able to get me out of the driver's, driver's seat and into the back seat without driving. Yeah. Uh, then somehow I manipulated, got back in the yeah. driver's seat. Me too. And a few things happened. And then I began to realize, remember when David found himself back out in the same wilderness? Yeah. yeah. After Bathsheba? Yeah. You ever, you ever had great victory and all of a sudden realized, it seemed like I've been here before. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Thank this you. Yes. Yeah. 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 This looks yeah. familiar. Yeah. 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 How do I get back here? Yeah. Yeah. It must be the devil attacking me. <laughs> and then I realized, and that self-willed devil, yeah. that independent yeah, spirit, is. that stubbornness, self-idolatry, I thought for sure was dead. Yeah. But I don't want to play yeah, possum. Uh -huh. yeah. mm. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. God wants to get you to that certain place. Yes, thank you, Lord. Oh. Now, to you your heads a word of prayer?